So, what are polymers? A polymer is a very large chain-like molecule which consists of many smaller molecules called monomers, like each of these tennis balls. Polymers, also known as macromolecules, can be divided into two groups. Natural polymers, polymers found in nature, for example DNA and proteins, and synthetic polymers, man-made polymers, for example those found in plastics and tennis rackets. More on that later. The majority of synthetic polymers can be formed by two main methods, chain growth polymerization and step growth polymerization. Chain growth or addition polymerization involves the addition of alkene monomers to the end of a growing chain. Chain growth polymers can be synthesized by three different methods, free radical, cationic and anionic polymerization. In each of these three methods, the overall mechanism of the reaction is similar and the process begins with an initiator, whether it be a free radical, an electrophile, or a nucleophile. This initiator reacts with the starting alkene of the monomer in the initiation step, breaking the double bond and forms a reactive species determined by the initiator. This reactive species subsequently reacts with the further alkene molecules, breaking the double bond and in each case extending the polymer chain, called a propagation step. This process is repeated several times until the termination step occurs, by different possible methods illustrated here, with the exception of anionic polymerization, which cannot be determined without external input and is therefore described as a living polymer. Step growth polymerization, commonly referred to as condensation polymerization, involves monomers which react to form a polymer and another small molecule, such as hydrochloric acid or water. Step growth polymers can be synthesized by condensation reactions. This reaction occurs from a condensation reaction between two functional groups, for example a carboxylic acid and an amine giving an amide group which links the two monomers. This means each molecule which forms the monomer must contain at least two reactive end groups. Each new monomer is added one at a time and it can occur at both ends of the molecule. So, after that brief introduction to what polymers are and how they can be formed, we can now look at how they are incorporated into tennis rackets. Polymers can be found in all areas of the racket, including the frame, bumper guards, grips, strings, grommets and the butt cap. A significant technological advancement in tennis came in the late 1970s when pro players began using metal rackets over wooden ones. This meant that players could hit much more powerful strokes, as the rackets were far lighter and more efficient at producing topspin, a key feature in any modern player's game. The use of graphite also came a few years later, giving rise to lighter frames. However, modern rackets primarily consist of carbon fibre and a few other materials. Carbon fibre is a remarkable material, as it is lightweight but also very strong. To produce carbon fibre, the polymer polyacrylonitrile is used. This polymer is initially heated to form cyclic rings rather than the cyano groups in the polymer chain. Further heating to 700 degrees causes the carbon atoms in the rings to lose hydrogen and form a chain of pyridine rings and hydrogen gas. The compound is then heated slowly at 400 to 600 degrees so that the polymer chains cross-link with each other to form blocks of polymer chains. By slowly increasing the heat up from 600 to around 1300 degrees, these blocks repeatedly join together, removing the nitrogen atoms to form nitrogen gas and a sheet of carbon atoms arranged in cyclic rings. The sheets of carbon are then coated with oxygen to increase its ability to bond with other materials. This is done by immersing the sheets into carbon dioxide, air or ozone. The sheets or fibres are then twisted and folded together into yarns, giving it its strength. Kevlar, a synthetic polymer and an example of a polyamide, known for its strength and stiffness, is also found in racket frames. This provides greater feel in the racket, however, the trade-off is that it reduces vibration absorption and it is stiffer than materials like graphite. This means a balance of materials in the frame needs to be found to give a desired feel. Tennis manufacturer Wilson have been known to use basalt fibres in their rackets. These fibres are produced from basalt rocks, formed as a result of the rapid cooling of basalt lava. The main component of basalt rocks is silicon dioxide, SiO2, which is arranged in the polymeric structure in its crystalline form, quartz. This gives basalt properties similar to fibreglass, a material commonly used in tennis rackets in the past, However, it has better mechanical properties for the use in the racket. For example, it is extremely effective at dampening vibrations, reducing the possibility of injuries like tennis elbow. In order to protect the frame of a racket, bumper guards and grommets are used. These parts are generally made of common polyamides like nylon 11 and nylon 6, which are relatively cheap, but also very resistant to abrasions. Hence, they are used to protect the racket from bumps and scratches, as well as to prevent the tightly strung strings from being snapped by the sharp frame. Tennis strings are vital to allow a player to dramatically alter the feel of the racket and its playability, simply based on the choice of string material and the tension it is strung at. Hence, the wide variety of polymers which can be found in them. Generally speaking, in tennis, there are four main types of strings, synthetic gut, natural gut, polyesters and kevlar. Each of these have differing properties when it comes to playing the game. For example, polyesters provide far less feel and power than natural gut. However, they are much more durable, suiting more powerful players. Let's take a look at some of the materials used. Natural gut strings have been around since before the age of man-made polymers and still provide the best feel of any tennis string today. 
These strings are made from individual strands of cow or sheep intestines. Synthetic gut strings mostly consist of polymers based on amide and ketone functional groups. The polymers nylon 6, nylon 66, and PEEK, polyether ether ketone, are all used and can be layered up together to give some different string properties. Sometimes a copolymer of nylon 6 and nylon 66 can also be used. The first mainstream use of poly tennis strings came after Guga Curtin, a Brazilian tennis player who burst onto the tour armed with new polyester tennis strings, one of the first not to use the treasured natural gut strings. This allowed him to develop far more spin on the ball and led to him winning the 1997 French Open. From that point, a much larger proportion of the tennis players on tour began using these strings, leading to one of the biggest changes in tennis since the introduction of non-wood rackets. Poly or polyester strings typically use polyesters and therefore contain the ester functional group. Such polymers include PET, whose structure can be seen here. However, some poly strings use polyolefins or polymers using the alkene functional group, making them chamber of polymers as discussed earlier. Examples of these include PE and PP polymers. TPE can also be used, a type of copolymer, or a mix of polymers, with thermoplastic and elastomeric properties. As was the case with the synthetic gut strings, all these polymers can be combined to give different playabilities. Kevlar strings are the toughest of all tennis strings. This property can be explained due to the fact that the rigid, closely packed chains can form hydrogen bonds between the chains due to the amide functional groups, increasing the overall strength of the material. This property also means they have the lowest tension loss of all the string types, as can be seen in the graph here. In addition to the variety of materials on offer to construct a tennis string, there are also various ways of packing the strands of material. These material types include a solid core with one outer wrap, a solid core with multiple wraps, a multi-filament core with no wraps, a multi-filament core with wraps, textured strings, a solid core with wraps and additional filament, composites, blends of materials like alloys and metals, and monofilaments, a solid core with no wrap. In this video, I hope it has become apparent as to how polymers have impacted the game of tennis over the years. Current tour players work closely with manufacturers to develop the best racket possible to suit their game style and give them a competitive edge. Head recently introduced graphene, an even stronger and lighter material than carbon fibre. The hexagonal sheets of carbon in graphene are less likely to misalign during manufacture, which weakens the product. As for the future, who knows what the next big development will be? Perhaps I will invent a new material, but for now, I'm off for a game.